All right, the difference between permutations and combinations was mentioned in yesterday's lesson, um, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper in understanding the relationships between permutations and combinations. And then we're also gonna use the notation. The notation was also mentioned um, in yesterday's lesson too. So here we're just gonna go over when order matters and when order doesn't matter. So permutation is linked with when order matters. So in all these instances, order matters. And that's when you have like a first, second, third place, um, passcodes for phones, password, passwords for emails, um, any of that kind of stuff, the order is definitely going to matter. Zip code, order matters. Um, license plate, order matters. Um, all of those things. And then we'll go over the formula in just a second. Combination, on the other hand, is when order doesn't matter. So if you're ordering off this kid's meal, you're going to choose a main item, a side dish, and a drink. And it really doesn't matter what order you order the items in because you're still going to get all of them what you want and it's the same meal. Um, and so you, you just have different... I don't know why the hockey example is on here. I apologize. Um, so when you're looking at the difference between the, uh, the, the formulas here, um, we went over this on yesterday's notes, but the N is the total number that it's out of, and the R is the number being selected, okay? And I don't know if I went over factorial in the last notes or not, but I'm gonna talk about it here. The factorial or the exclamation point basically means this. If you see a five factorial, it really means five times four times three times two times one. If you saw um, seven factorial, it's gonna be seven times six times five times, and you get the point all the way down to one, okay? So it's a way for mathematicians to shorten writing out all of those numbers. All right, so when we're dealing with this, if I were to set up an example here, I'd do the num total number factorial on the top, and then I do n minus r, so these two numbers subtracted from each other and factorial that in the bottom. Now you're gonna have a lot of things that cancel when you go through this. Um, and I'll, I'll go over an example that looks like that. Now this formula for combinations is pretty much the same thing, except that we have this additional r factorial in the denominator that doesn't exist over here. It's not there, okay? So that's gonna change the amount of outcomes that this situation could have. So let's look at the slide before this for combination was n factorial over actual examples. This first one here, it says, you get to choose two toppings out of the four available for your Sunday. How many different Sundays can you make? Well, first we have to decide, is this a permutation or a combination? Now, when you put toppings on your Sunday, does it actually matter if you order hot fudge and caramel or caramel and hot fudge? No, it's, it's gonna make the same Sunday, so it doesn't matter. So this is gonna be a combination, okay? Because order doesn't matter. And when I set it up, we usually set it up as NCR. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put four is the total number of toppings, and we're choosing two of them. Now the formula, if you go back n minus r factorial, and it has that additional r factorial. So I'm gonna set up with the numbers. So my n value is four, so I have four factorial up here. n minus r is four minus two, and then two factorial. So I'm gonna start simplifying this. The four factorial on the top is four times three times two times one. And this part, four minus two factorial, ends up being two factorial. Now, don't make the mistake of doing this. Don't multiply those two yet. Well, how you need to write it out is the top stays the same, but the bottom is going to be 2 times 1. That's the first 2 factorial. And then the next 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Now, some of these things can cancel out. For example, 2 times 1 can cancel out with that. And we know that 2 times 1 is 2. There's not a 2 in the top, but I can divide this 4 by 2. And what I end up getting then is just 2 times 3, and my answer is 6. So if we have four toppings available for a Sunday and we're going to choose two of them, there are six different outcomes that could happen. On the next one, it says you have four students trying for first and second place. Okay, so that first and second place right away should tell you we're dealing with permutation. Order's gonna matter. 
So permutation looks like this, and this is the formula. And now I'm going to set up for what I have. I know I'm selecting two here. Okay. And then diving. How many different results are possible? Uh, oh, here it is. We had four students. So that's my total. This is the same setup as our last problem. We had four choose two. Now we're going to see how it changes when it's four permutation two or four P2. So um, N factorial is going to be four factorial. N minus R is four minus two factorial. So I'm just simplifying the same way we did the last one. Four minus two is two factorial, so I do two factorial on the bottom. And then I can cancel what I have out. And I end up with four times three, so I get 12 different permutations. There were only six combinations with those same number combina same numbers, and there's 12 permu or yeah, 12 permutations. All right, next example. Um, three students are chosen out of five to compete in a spelling bee. How many different groups of students can be chosen? Now, this one's a little bit tougher because, yeah, when you're in a spelling bee, there's a first place, second place, third place, and so on and so forth. But they're just trying to get a grouping of students. There's just three out of five. It doesn't say if it's like the best three out of the five, the first, the second, third, none of that. So it's actually a combination. So I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say 5C3. And then I'm going to do 5 factorial on the top, N factorial. Remember, this is my N and this is my R. Then in the bottom, it's going to be N minus R factorial. And then lastly, R factorial. You have the extra piece when you're dealing with combinations. So I'm going to set this up so I can simplify it. This part ends up being 2 factorial. And 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And then I can cancel out the things that I can. So I can cancel that out with that. And 2 times 1 is 2, so I can divide this by 2 and get 2 left over. So my answer ends up being 5 times 2, or 10. 10 different outcomes, that's what we're solving for. You pick a president, a vice president, and a secretary. So there's definitely like a hierarchy there. So when you're picking those out, it looks like you're choosing three people. We're talking about permutation because the order matters from a group of five individuals. So this is going to be 5P3. And so in the top, it's n factorial. I'm just going to point out this is my n, this is my r. And then in the bottom, it's going to be n minus r factorial. And now we just have left to simplify. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Um, in the bottom, I shouldn't have 5 factorial. 5 minus 3, fa five minus three is 2. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. And then we can cancel out. So 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60. There's 60 different outcomes that they could have. Um, on this first one, just go ahead and try it this way, and then eventually we'll get into how to do this on your calculator too. Good luck to you guys. All right, so it looks like that's it. Um, permutations and combinations, school slides. Um, one last thing I'm going to talk about, too, is there are ways to do these on your calculator. G quiz is what your homework is going to be. I was missing on the I just want to make sure there was anything.